if I told you that six warships built today will still defend American interests when your grandchildren have grandchildren? The U.S. Navy's Ford-class aircraft carriers represent the most expensive and technologically advanced warships ever constructed. Their expected service lives stretch to 2100 and beyond, making them unique among military investments. Recently, the U.S. Navy announced it will name two future vessels after two previous commanders-in-chief. During a private White House ceremony on January 3rd, Secretary of the Navy Carlos del Toro introduced two future Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carriers named USS William J. Clinton and USS George W. Bush, after the 42nd and 43rd U.S. Presidents of the United States. The U.S. Navy Secretary Carlos del Toro said the future Ford-class carriers will serve as lasting tributes to each leader's legacy in service to the United States. The newly named flat tops follow the Sea Service's tradition of naming the nuclear-powered carriers after U.S. presidents. The trend has many exceptions, including the first-in-class USS Nimitz, the USS Carl Vinson, the USS John C. Stennis, and the future Ford-class ships USS Doris Miller and USS Enterprise. Here are the names of the first six supercarriers in the Ford class, poised to become the backbone of America's naval power for the rest of the 21st century. Number 1. USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78 The first-in-class USS Gerald R. Ford is named after the 38th U.S. President who took office after President Richard Nixon resigned in the wake of the Watergate scandal. Ford granted Nixon a controversial pardon, saying at the time that it was in the country's best interest to end the American tragedy in which we all, all have played a part. The USS Gerald R. Ford, the world's largest and most advanced aircraft carrier, completed its first full deployment last January, which the Pentagon extended in response to the October 7th Hamas attacks in Israel. The Ford and the other warships in its strike group served as a deterrence message for its 239-day deployment to the Mediterranean in 2023. Number 2. USS John F. Kennedy CFN-79 The second in class, USS John F. Kennedy, was named after the 35th U.S. President and shares its name with the last conventional aircraft carrier built for the Navy for the introduction of the nuclear-powered Nimitz class. The future carrier was initially set to deliver in June 2024, but it was delayed a year to July 2025 so the Navy could perform more work to prepare it for deployment in the Indo-Pacific. The Navy said that Kennedy would be equipped with new technology and warfighting capabilities, making the future aircraft carrier the most agile and lethal combat platform globally. Number 3. USS Enterprise CVN-80 the future USS Enterprise is one of two Ford-class carriers that wasn't named after a U.S. president. It carries on a storied name whose heritage includes the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, a decorated World War II carrier, and a brig from the Barbary Wars more than 200 years ago. Still under construction at Huntington Ingalls Industries' Newport News, the U.S.'s only aircraft carrier shipyard, the Enterprise was initially scheduled to deliver by March 2028. Still, the Navy's shipbuilding review found that it would provide by May 2030 at the latest. In November, the Enterprise was moved for the first time at the shipyard to accommodate the construction of USS Doris Miller on the same dry dock. Number 4. USS Doris Miller CVN-81 the other Ford-class carrier without a U.S. president's name is the future USS Doris Miller. The future supercarrier, named after U.S. Navy sailor Doris or Dory Miller, 
is expected to be delivered in early 2032, a year and a half later than scheduled. Miller was a World War II hero of the surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The mess attendant fired at Japanese aircraft with a 50 caliber machine gun on the battleship USS West Virginia and was the first black person to be awarded the Navy Cross, the service's second highest award for valor. Naming CVN-81 for Dory Miller casts long overdue recognition to a true American hero and icon. The Master Chief Petty Officer at the time, Russell Smith, said during the ship's naming ceremony. It also honors the contributions of African Americans and enlisted sailors for the first time in the history of American aircraft carriers. One controversy has been that the Nimitz class carrier John C. Stennis honors a key lawmaker behind the funding of nuclear powered aircraft carriers, who was also a longtime segregationist and opponent of the U.S. Navy's racial integration. Number 5. USS William J. Clinton, CVN-82 Bill Clinton served as the 42nd President of the United States, becoming the second President in U.S. history to be impeached after Andrew Johnson in 1868. He faced charges of lying under oath and obstruction of justice in the wake of his infamous affair with the White House intern Monica Lewinsky. At his time as Commander-in-Chief, Clinton ordered cruise missile strikes against Iraq in retaliation for the assassination attempt on former President George H.W. Bush. He also played a key role in promoting peace in the Middle East and Northern Ireland through the Oslo Accords and the Good Friday Agreement. The name of the future CVN-82 was announced in a private ceremony shortly after the new year, during which Clinton's daughter, Chelsea Clinton, was announced as the carrier's sponsor. Number 6. USS George W. Bush, CVN-83 The sixth Ford-class carrier is set to bear the name of former President George W. Bush, whose presidency was defined by the 9-11 attacks and the launching of the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. He implemented domestic counterterrorism measures and built a worldwide coalition to dismantle terrorist groups. The 10th and final Nimitz-class carrier was named after Bush's father, George H.W. Bush, who served as the 41st President of the U.S. The elder Bush was honored for his service as one of the youngest naval aviators serving in World War II, receiving military decorations such as the Distinguished Flying Cross, three air medals, and the Presidential Unit Citation. CVN-82 and CVN-83 are set to be the fifth and sixth carriers to join the Navy's fleet in the coming decade, but they're not yet under construction, nor have contracts been issued for HII's Newport News. That was the end of the video. If you're interested in it, please make sure to give us a like. Thank you for watching.